grown up thinking around a paradigm of money for profit, right? That's, I mean, you just put it very simply. You have the money, you invest it, and it's there for profit. And the fact that there is a nascent, not yet completely settled, but a nascent shift over to money for purpose, that paradigm shift is absolutely essential and will be so transformational in this century. And we're witnessing it right now. We are have been having these conversations, listening to these leaders, where basically they are helping to push toward money for purpose in addition to profit, not instead of, but basically for both there or to be completely complete completely complete for um, for profit purpose and planet uh, and that's uh, that's a major shift that we're seeing there in terms of what I'm doing just I'll, I'll say two sentences on that the first is working with others on the plumbing of the financial system so that every financial decision takes climate change into account and so that's information, it's tools like stress testing, and it's new markets. So those three. But what we're talking about now is having the commitments, and not just the commitments, the actions to uh, finance uh, the path to net zero and accelerate that pathway. You know, what this, it it is an alliance of alliances. um, And um, when uh, Nigel um, Toffin and myself and others were, were thinking about the architecture for the financial system as it was evolving, as some alliances were, were setting up, and I think in many respects we look first to the, the Net Zero Asset Owners Alliance, uh, so those are the pension funds and the big life companies, yep. the people who ultimately have our money, it's all our money in the end, but they're the ones who have the longest horizon. Um, that being the first, moving into asset managers, but but realizing, well, we don't really have an alliance of the standard of race to zero uh, for the banks or for the insurance underwriters as well. Um, so that's another alliance that's coming into being as part of GFANS. But secondly, getting these pillars in place, absolutely necessary, and again, reinforce of the standard of race to zero, uh, which is critical the gold standard for a net zero commitment. Um, It's the financial sector. So we need to have it coordinated uh, between these various types of entities. We need a table where they can coordinate and be reinforcing more than the sum of their parts. um, And they can identify which elements of that plumbing I spoke about a moment ago is working well, what else is needed, what should be changed and work on that in real time. Mark, and as you look across the table at public finance, um, for, from where I sit, I see private finance as being able to provide the scale and the speed um, that is necessary, assuming that public finance plays its role. And that role is, I think, uh, a, a, at least a two-part role. One is de-risking and accelerating private investment. But the other, which is going to play a huge role at COP26, is the political symbolism of public finance. And these, you know, these hundred billion that have been plaguing us for such a long time. I'd love to know, you know, if if you're dealing there in the trillions, which we have to, because that's what we need, a trillion dollars um, a year for transformation. If you're dealing in the trillions from the private side, How do you look across the table at public finance, both in terms of delivering the political promise that is basically the tail that wags the dog, because what are we going to do? A hundred billion is not going to do anything, but it is the political symbol. And also, how do you see it or what would you like to see in terms of what governments can do with public finance in order to accelerate and de-risk the private side? Yeah, essential question, and I love the way you frame it. First, there is a symbolism and a and a solidarity that comes with first and foremost making the hundred billion, uh, part of which uh, uh, related to uh, 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 multilateral development uh, development aid and, and and other elements there. But first and foremost, making that and that is a top priority of uh, this COP, as you know, and uh, needs to be met. Secondly. Um, 
that it is good news that the private sector is moving. Um, it makes it more anom anomalous, uh, more of an outlier that, um, you know, not all of the multilateral development banks, not all of the development finance institutions are uh, meeting their obligations under uh, the Paris Accord, under two, forgive yeah. me, it's 2.13C or two, yeah, 2.13C uh, to be Paris aligned. The financial sector needs to be Paris aligned. And of course, these institutions themselves at the heart needs to be Paris aligned. Um, and we need it now. And, and in part of your preamble, uh, under, uh, underscores the billions to trillions opportunity that comes with our multilateral development banks and de development finance being Paris aligned and taking on elements of risk in investments in adaptation and mitigation in developing countries uh, that unlocks much larger components of private finance alongside the so-called the blended finance. Now, blended finance is it's sometimes talked about, it's almost like a holy grail. It's not a holy grail. We can find blended finance. We can unlock blended finance uh, in a way. And I think to the credit of the Italian presidency of the G20, and of course, Italy and the UK are working very closely together, as you know, for COP, uh, is to take this issue on um, and put it on the table and, and really focus um, attention on how our multilateral development banks, uh, for example, using their balance sheets in a way that, uh, of course, does absorb risk. You have to absorb risk, but the, not risk that crowds out the private sector, but that opens up uh, the private exactly. sector. And then, and then secondly, as, as we know, and, and this is a big emphasis of this COP, rightly so, is we need a, we need a balance to that, um, those flows, a balance between adaptation and, uh, uh, and uh, mitigation, and, mitigation uh, and, and resilience, and really the 50-50 um, uh, split. And that's, look, I'll be candid. I don't think we'll get a 50-50 split uh, from the private sector flows uh, on their own, but we can, we can get a 50-50 split if we have uh, the public flows um, and, the, and the blended flows uh, uh, aligned accordingly. And that's what we have to, that we have to be very explicit and very deliberate uh, about that. And I think it is now time to really, uh, we, we have to do more than one thing at a time, of course, but uh, to spend more attention on the, on, the, on the public side. I've always thought that finance is actually at the basis of everything because whatever is financed gets uh, built where you know I'm I'm want to saying uh, wherever money goes, so go emissions, or so go emission reductions.